Hey there folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to the farm. Today we're down here by the chicken coop and the honeybees and the garden, which there ain't no garden. Today we're going to make it a garden. So we're going to talk a little bit about compost. We're going to talk a little bit about soil building. We're going to work on the soil here before we till it up. We're going to till up our garden and get ready for spring. This is our vegetable garden down closest to our chicken coop in our house. And we're going to go up to the corn garden, which is going to be closest to where our pig pen is going to be. And that's going to be where we grow our melons and our corn. So come along today as we build soil and we learn a little bit about gardening. Yes, First things first, let's talk a little bit about why we are where we are. So we are in fairly close proximity to our house. We have a shed down here that keeps all of our garden tools and our honeybee tools. Our chickens are close by so that we can put the manure onto the garden right here. And this is our old garden spot from last year. And we've been continually building soil for the last three years here on this spot. We've got some soil amendments that are pretty unique that I want to show you. So down here in these piles is what we call rock dust. Let me get you a close up. So rock dust is what we call screenings or rock dust. This came from the rock quarry and basically they're giving it away. So we had 10 dump truck, 10 tandem dump truck loads brought out. And of course that's not 10 total loads. We use some of it on the driveway, some of it on a parking area and some of it we're going to try in the garden. It's full of minerals and what do we know about rock and gravel? When the sun is at its hottest peak in the middle of the summer, where does grass want to grow? Right in the middle of your driveway. So rock dust holds moisture and that's what we want to do. We want to hold moisture with compost, with rock dust, and we want to build soil. So you see a lot of volunteer plants, a lot of volunteer weeds, a lot of volunteer plants in the garden. We've already tilled this garden one time this year and we let all the volunteers come up and now we're going to till them back under again and once we get our garden planted we'll keep an eye on those with the hoe and we're going to use compost. This is the best stuff ever. So this is wood chips, wood chip compost from the Asflun Tree Company. Those guys dumped every load that they had from our area when they were cleaning out for the power line. So they had something like 50 loads of wood chips and we use that as compost here on the garden so once we weed we'll throw this stuff down and it'll help prevent weeds and we'll show you that in future vlogs. Now there's a reason we haven't already spread all this out onto the top of the garden. It's because it's too hot. Hot meaning it's still working, it's still composting. When I scooped this up and brought it down here it was still steam rolling off of it and I got a cool tool I want to show you and we'll show you the temperature inside that. So way down deep inside the compost I have a composting thermometer right here and you can see it tells you warm active and hot so we're at about 100 and yeah, 123 degrees something like that and this is a compost thermometer it's an extra long basically an extra long turkey thermometer that goes into your compost I'll post a link down below if you want to pick yourself up a compost thermometer if you're gardening if you're composting this thing is super duper fun you can tell when your compost needs to be turned because it gets warm or inactive and that tells you you need to turn it and reintroduce oxygen so that the microbes can continue to break down whatever biologic material you have. Now there's a lot of science to compost. There's a lot of science to the brown, to the woody, to the green, to the grass clippings. If we were to put grass clippings in this compost and turn it into it, it would fire it back up and it'd be 160, 180 degrees. It would almost catch on fire. It would get so hot. So there's a lot of compost science and we'll get into more of that in future videos. So if you like this stuff, be sure to pound that like button subscribe to the channel we got a whole lot more fun okay so we're at garden spot number two and I like to have two of everything I like to have two garden spots if you're starting beehives you want to have two beehives if you got chickens you want to have at least two chickens or two chicken coops so you can compare the two this garden has nowhere near the weed and grass burden that the other garden has. Look at it. It looks like the Sahara Desert out here. There is no biologic material in the soil whatsoever. We're going to be fixing that with this. 
black gold. So I've already checked the temperature on the compost. We're going to take you over. We'll let you look at the thermometer. This stuff has aged. All these little piles of compost have aged for like two and a half, two years, something like that. And we're going to stick the thermometer in the fresh compost pile at the end of the row and you'll see how hot it is. Stick it in there. You can see the temperature actually going down. Awesome. It's about 79 degrees in there. I've checked every one of these piles and that tells me that the compost is cool enough to put on the land and we'll till it into the land and we'll start building some biologic structure in here so we can get the worms and the beneficial microbes that we need on this garden spot. Look at it. It's horrible. It's just like the Sahara Desert. Let me get a handful of this soil so you can see. If you follow the vlog, if you follow the farm vlog, you'll get to see this year after year how we've made it such a wonderful, wonderful thing. Look at that. It's just clay. Now let's take you over here to the compost pile. That's my pride and joy. This is the one that's going to make the garden pop next year. So this is wood chips old hay and a bunch of goat manure all mixed in it's going to make our garden go insane next year we may be growing tomatoes on this spot next year let's go ahead and try the compost thermometer on it we've got about 80 degrees on it my guess is we're going to be pushing 140 degrees with this one we'll slide this guy down in here and watch our temperature skyrocket pretty amazing if you don't have one of these little compost thermometers you got to get yourself one it's really fun to play with. I'm a little off on the temperature. I think we're probably going to push about the 130 degree mark. I like to see it pegging up here at the 160 mark if I possibly can. And you start getting to the 180 and you're working on a fire hazard. So there's a little bit of your composting lesson. You guys tired of hearing about compost and soil building yet? Well, that's how you build a garden. Don't expect to just drop a tiller in the ground or hoe up a spot or rake up a spot, put some plants in the ground and be like, wow, I'm a great gardener. You got to learn. You got to learn this stuff. You got to build some biomass in the soil. You got to put some biologic material so the good microbes do their job and the worms get in there and do their job. So we're going to get busy with the landscape rake on the vent track and then we're going to hook up the tiller and get to tilling. All right? So you might be asking, why rock dust? Why are you doing rock dust? And it's really only covering about half the garden. Well, I'm experimenting and you need to experiment as a gardener. You need to try different things. So I'm gonna see how this does. I know this soil in this area of the garden is very, very hard clay and it likes to hold moisture and get harder and harder as time goes on. When you till your soil up and it doesn't have a lot of sand or biologic material, it tends to turn into a almost concrete type material. So that's why we're putting the rock dust in this area and we put a lot on the other area and it's still it's a little bit sandier but it's still a hard hard clay over time here as we grow our vegetables we will shovel out this compost around the vegetables to keep the weeds down so we'll go in with a hoe we'll weed it out and then we'll throw the compost down around to build more soil year after year after year so let's go hook up to the tiller on the vent track and get busy i 
disconnect on the vent track, there are only two little pins and a little hook that holds it in place. This thing has two different selectors on the hydraulics, so there's an electrical hookup and two hydraulic lines. Some implements have hydraulic lines, some implements have hydraulic and electric lines, and some have no lines whatsoever, it's just a belt driven system. Pretty cool, check it out. That's your electrical. Your two quick connect hydraulic connectors. We go back to our connectors. We plug them up. me say it before and you'll hear me say it again guys sometimes farming is failing I failed when we went to hook up the vent track we've had the stump grinder attachment on the vent track which is that little bitty guy over there we've been grinding some stumps and on the vent track there's this little mirror attachment that goes on the stump grinder you'll see that in a future video but let me show you what I did and I broke a belt on the vent track and the reason I broke a belt is because I was being lazy and I was in a hurry let me show you so there's a mirror attachment that attaches right here and there's another one that goes right on this side well that kind of interferes with this case right here and here's how the tiller works there is a three belt pulley system right here that drives the tines underneath the tiller right here and there's only one belt that drives the whole system and that's that belt right there that's the belt that i snapped now the reason I snapped this belt is because I didn't put it on the pulley and when I backed up I ran over it, pulled it, and snapped it. Here's how the belt tension works. You pull this lever, you can look down here and see it, that is the pulley putting tension on that belt. So the system to hook this up is really, really simple. It's just those two little arms that hook up and then it just latches into place. Had we had things done appropriately the way I should have done it, we would have never snapped a belt. I was in a hurry, getting rushed so I could film it for you guys, and bam, snapped it. Got nobody to blame but myself. So we're gonna get started tilling up this garden. We actually ran the 240 with the everything attachments tiller through this a couple times, and now we're gonna use the Ventrac tiller. A lot of people saw the comparison video. If you look right up here, I'll post a link to the comparison between the Ventrac tiller and the conventional three-point tiller. They said, man, I don't wanna look backwards the whole time but even if you're on a tractor with a conventional three-point tiller you're still going to be looking back you're always looking back if you're running a tractor if you know anything about running a tractor you're going to be looking back whether you're bush hogging whether you're tilling whether you're raking whatever you're doing you're always looking back so you're only going to be tilling a garden spot like this for about 25 to 30 minutes that's it and we're going to run through it twice we've already ran through it twice before and we're going to run through it twice again so let's have some fun 